This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. We're back with Dwayne and Matthew Splitter, a sorghum producer from Ellsworth and Rice Counties. Dwayne Tames joining you once again with Ag AM in Kansas. And during the 2016 sorghum schools held across the state, chance to catch up with Matthew Splitter uh, from uh, uh, Central Kansas here, a sorghum producer. And Matthew, tell us a little bit about uh, your operation and how you've utilized sorghum in your crop mix. We farm in, in Ellsworth and Rice counties here in Central Kansas, and sorghum is a very important part of our operation. Um, it's a great rotational crop. It's a good yielding crop for us. Um, it, it kind of takes the place for corn in our neck of the woods. Um, it takes a lot less moisture <laughs> to grow, of course, and it uh, is a very profitable crop for our, for our operation as well. As far as uh, last year, we had a tremendous number of sorghum acres in the state of Kansas, and, uh, and the yield was awfully good as well. We were blessed with weather that helped us out in that regard. Uh, how do you see things playing out? Obviously, price isn't what it was a year ago, but uh, the yield plus the price still made things pretty reasonable for guys. Yeah, the yield was tremendous. We just had an exceptional year for, for sorghum yields. Um, of course, you know, the price just isn't there like it was maybe 12 months ago. But, um, you know, the yield more than compensated for for the price drop. Um, you know, it, being being such a rotational crop, it's very hard to switch away from it um, just to try to take advantage of a market or try to, to take advantage of, of moisture, you know, anything like that. Um, but, you know, the last year was just a, a great year to be a sorghum farmer um, on the yield side, for sure. Of course, it presents its whole host of problems um, when you're starting to deal with, uh, you know, maybe some diseases, sugarcane aphids, um, resistance of, of pigweeds, and other other weed pressure like that. But all of that is, um, with good management, can be overcome, for sure, and produce a good good crop year after year. Matthew, you had an opportunity to participate uh, in a national program called Leadership Sorghum, uh, and uh, there's another class that they're calling for. I believe uh, through the end of April, individuals have opportunity to uh, to nominate for that. Tell us a little bit about your experience with that class. Yeah, I had the opportunity to uh, be in the inaugural class of Leadership Sorghum. It was class one. Um, we um, there's quite a number of producers from Kansas, but as well as across, I believe on, on in our class there's eight states represented. Um, we got to see parts of the industry that just the normal producer doesn't get to see. Um, everything from seed production to policy to exports to, uh, to domestic use um, in end users. It was just a tremendous opportunity as a young producer to to explore you know just all the sides of the industry. Um, it, it made me grow as an individual, as a husband, as a father, and as a board member for, for organizations here in central Kansas, for sure. Our thanks to Matthew Splitter for joining us here from the 2016 Sorghum Schools held in Kansas. Again, if you're interested in leadership sorghum, I would encourage you to contact the Kansas Grain Sorghum Commission or Kansas Grain Sorghum Producers Association for more information about that class. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. We're here every Tuesday on Ag AM in Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.